Hey, hi, hello, and other such greetings. So today I would like to talk about my top five books that I read in 2019. And I only read 15 books total for the entire year last year. So you'd think that it might be a little bit difficult to choose my top five or even my bottom five from only 15 books. You'd think there wouldn't be much of a chance for there to be like a huge sort of range between what was my least favorite and most favorite read of last year, but it was surprisingly easy because I, I had a really messed up reading year last year. I read a lot of books that I absolutely adored and I read a lot of books that I absolutely despised and not many books in between. So without further ado, here are the top ones. So this list, instead of being in any kind of order of preference, is literally just in the order that I read the books, starting at the start of the year and ending at the end of the year. So the first book on the list is The Hate Race by Maxime Beniba Clark. So for those who don't know, The Hate Race is an autobiographical memoir with some creative elements to it as well. She's talking about her childhood growing up as a black woman in suburban Sydney and basically what nowadays is known as like the biggest and worst period of racism outside of just the mass genocide of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And one of the biggest periods of just sort of institutionalized and also social racism against um, immigrants. So her parents immigrated to Australia as quite well off college teachers um, bought a house in sort of suburban Sydney but still managed to obviously experience some pretty horrific racism and Maxine Beniba Clark's book is talking about her experience basically through childhood and then high school and it's interspersed with her musings now as a mother of a child who is also going to high school and thinking about the ways in which you know the world has changed in the ways in which a lot of it still hasn't. So it was a really powerful read, really eye-opening read, and also just very well written as well. So solid combination of all the good things in a book. The second book on this list is The Golem and the Ginny, which is a book that I read for my fantasy-themed adventure-a-thon way back in the start of the year, last year. This was, yeah, it's a book that had been on my radar for a while thanks to Thoughts on Tomes, I think. She filmed a review of this book and she made it sound so incredibly lovely and exactly like the kind of book that I wanted to read. So I read it and it was beautiful. It's a sort of historical, magical realism type, fantasy type book that basically is about a, a golem, so a clay living creature from Jewish religion and culture, and also a jinni, which is from Islamic religion and culture. And both of them have come from very different areas in the world, and both of them somehow end up in New York in the sort of 1920s and 30s. The story is about them living their life in New York, trying to pretend to be humans when they're very clearly not, and then finding each other and befriending each other, and the ways in which their journeys to New York, even though they were so very different, um, might actually be Connected. So it was a really lovely story with some beautiful characterization, beautiful relationships. New York in the 1920s is always just gorgeous to read about and is really educational as well for me at least like I learned a lot about sort of mythologies and superstitions of two religions that I don't actually know a lot about and any book where I learn something is a good book in my book. Ha <laughs> ha ha, that's a terrible sentence. The third book on this list is a book that anyone who follows me on Twitter will definitely know about, and that is The Binding by Bridget Collins. This book is a historical fiction book that I think was written last year, maybe the year before at most, and it centers itself around the concept of all books actually being people's memories that have been sort of taken out of their head through a magical process which is called binding and put into a book instead. So basically people go to a person called a binder and they'll tell them a um, memory that they don't want to have anymore and that memory gets put into a book so that they don't have to remember it anymore. And that's the sort of underlying logic of the world and then the story itself follows a young man named Emmett who is training to be a binder because he has the skill of doing this binding thing and he's working as an apprentice as a binder and in his work he comes across a book with his name on it that he doesn't remember ever sharing and basically like he didn't know that he had had memories taken from him and that he had been bound and the rest of the story is sort of him finding out about what that is and the consequences of it and all of that kind of stuff. It gets very poetic at times and some of the sentences can be pretty sort of long-winded and metaphorical but I personally quite like that kind of reading um, so I just yeah very much enjoyed it. There's a lot of there's some nice romances there's some good secrets and some drama and 
was just a good read. The fourth book on this list is News of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. So this is the second book to the Strange the Dreamer series that was published a while ago, but I took a while to finally get around to reading it and I shouldn't have. I should have been more excited to read it given that I absolutely adored Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares was no exception. I read it all in just a trance of absolute horror at what was happening and tension and fear about what was gonna happen to all these characters that I loved. I just thought it was beautiful. Lainey Taylor has an amazing style of writing. She's really got away with words that no other author that I know has. And while it wasn't particularly heavy on the plot side of things, like the whole story probably doesn't span very much time and not a lot happens in that time, it does have a huge amount of tension and it's just like these relationships between people that could go absolutely horrible at any given moment and like this sort of impending sense of doom that everyone's trying to figure out how to stop. So it's low on action but high on tension and it was just, yeah, really good read. And the final book on my top five list is Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman, which is the second book in his Book of Dust trilogy and another book that was published a while ago that I took a while to get around to reading because your girl has been A poor and B pretty low on the mental health front, which has not been just not good conditions for reading. But I finally did end up reading it and I listened to it on audiobook and it was narrated by Michael Sheen and it was beautiful and I got so excited that I also bought the book even though I didn't have a lot of money to spare and read it and listened to it at the same time so now I have both and just I can't even begin to describe the ways in which I just adore Philip Pullman's world the world of this book these books like I loved his dark materials when I was a kid I loved the first book in this particular series which is set in the same world and this se this second book just drew me in and captured my heart in a way that I did not expect a book to do. It's honestly probably the only book that I've read in a long time that has made me feel that book breakup post finishing a book, like heartbreak of just not knowing what you want to read next. And I'm hoping to post a proper review of it at some point because I just want to have those feelings written down somewhere. Yeah, I just, I thought it was a really lovely book. I'm really excited for this series. I loved all of the characters, the world, everything. I'm so excited for the next book to come out, even though I still have to wait like two years. That's just too long. But we don't talk about that. We just read books and love them and then wait and then read books and love them and then wait on repeat until we die. But yes, that in short, all long is a summary of all of my top five reads of last year. It was a pretty dull reading year aside from these five books. These five books were the standouts. A lot of the rest of the books that I read were... Thank you for watching this ramble. I will see you for another video very shortly, I am sure. And until then, as always, stay classic. Bye. Sit there and count your little fingers. Unhappy little girl blue